Chapter 181 Spread Dark Magus Having heard the group leave in the middle of the night, Liam felt compelled to follow them, remembering Gunther's words to stick to them like a fly. It didn't take him long to figure out where they were going, since it was a destination that the others had been to a few times. There was nowhere else to go other than the hunting forest and back down to the area of fog. The real question was why, and that's what led Liam to discover their exact location. He hadn't done this just because Gunther asked. He was genuinely curious about what they were doing. What should we do with him? He's seen you open the portal, Dame asked. Soon after, the portal actually closed right up. That was because the energy from the level 1 power stone had been used already. The portal's rays opened weren't like those of others. They weren't permanent. Seeing this, it left Liam witnessing something that he wasn't supposed to see. His teeth were chattering slightly, and the grip from Dame alone felt too strong. He had tried to shove and move slightly, but the pressure had increased on his shoulders, making it clear that he wasn't allowed to leave. I'm sorry, Liam said. His single eye was watering up, and he had placed both hands together, shaking them continuously. I know I shouldn't have followed you guys, but I wanted to see what you were doing. I thought we were a team, you know. We defeated the five disciples together, and we got through that mess with the dimension boss. You need the whole group, otherwise it just doesn't work. Of all the things to say, this was Liam's plea. Not to save his life, but to be a part of the group. Otherwise, it just didn't feel right. He had no clue what he had just done. If Liam weren't someone who had already known part of Ray's secret and owed him one, he would have had to end his life to keep his secret a secret. Yet, Ray's could tell from the look in the other's eyes that they pitied him slightly. Look, I'll do whatever you guys want. I'll keep my mouth shut. I'm one of you guys now. If you go down, then I go down as well. And why the heck would I want to get myself in trouble? Liam continued to try and convince the others. Come on, man. I'm begging you here, Ray's. Haven't I helped you guys out a lot? Come o. Okay, Ray's eventually blurted out. Please just stop speaking. We will let you come with us. Did you leave a note with one of the teachers explaining your absence? Liam hadn't done so since he wasn't so sure what was going on, but he thought if the others had left and he had done as well, then surely Gunther would know what had happened and come up with an excuse. It will be okay, Liam answered honestly, a little worried that a certain tick might show that he was lying. Ray's produced another power stone in his hand and dropped it to the ground. Almost like a show, at the same time, Ray's dark magic started to leave his hands and went down to the magic circle. The crystal had hit the floor at the same time as the magic, and the circle lit up, producing the portal again. All right, let's try this one more time, shall we? Let's go, Ray's said as he walked through first. The others weren't too far behind, and Dame and Liam were the last two to enter. Once everyone was through, it was left for a few more seconds until eventually the portal closed up. Entering a portal, Liam was fearing the worst, preparing himself for another risky battle as he fought against beasts. But he was now a stage two warrior. If he had gotten through it before, he could get through it again. When he opened his eyes, though, he felt the atmosphere hardly felt any different. It was slightly more humid compared to before, but that was all. When opening his eyes, he noticed that they were in a dimly lit cave. Come on, let's not waste too much time, Ray said as he walked forward, and everyone witnessed his body warp right through a wall. It was a dead end, an area full of rocks, yet Ray's had walked through it, and now none of them were able to see him. Everyone was confused and worried. Looking at the wall, there was no way to tell if it was real or fake. That was until the person who had the most trust in Ray's out of them all, Safa, decided to walk ahead. Her footsteps were confident, but when approaching the wall, she had closed her eyes. In doing so, she had walked right through. Seeing now two people go to the other side, it started to give the others more confidence, and they started to head through one by one. Going on to the other side, they soon realized that they were still in the cave, but just in another part a part where they could see a clear exit, and Ray's was already at the very end. I brought you guys along so you wouldn't get hurt, Ray's commented, but it doesn't mean that I have to wait for you. If you slow me down, 
then I'll leave you behind. Walking forward onto the hard, dark orange ground, which was black in some areas, Ray started to walk ahead. The others followed, jumping out and looking around. They couldn't see much apart from a few trees that looked to mostly be on their last legs, as if rain hadn't fallen in the area for years. However, there was something that had caught all of their eyes. It was so large, built up in the middle like a giant tower, and even though the night sky was out, it was lit up like a giant lantern. Their eyes were glued to the sight like a moth to a flame. Why does this look so familiar? Liam said. I'm sure I've seen something like this in a painting or something. Is that the city of Repton? Simeon asked. I guess we really are in the demonic faction after all. The city of Repton was quite well known because it was one of the biggest cities that belonged to the demonic faction. Immediately after hearing these words, Liam realized and it clicked in his head. Repton, the demonic faction. Wait, this is the demonic faction. I thought we had gone to another dimension. What are we doing in the demonic faction? Liam shouted. Liam's fear was palpable because there were many stories told to the dark faction about the demonic faction. Nearly no one, especially younger children, had been to the demonic faction, so they only knew about them through tales. Immediately, Liam started to think that this might be even more dangerous than if he had entered a dimension with beasts. What's wrong? Are you regretting coming with us now after all that talk about sticking together? Simeon said. Where's your balls, as you would say? Let's get a move on, Ray said, and Dame, now in his own comfort zone, had placed his hand on his face, taking off the mask. His hands dropped down by his side, and all of the others were stunned by what they could see. He's quite handsome, Simeon ended up blurting out loud. There had been so many surprises. The fact that Dame was using something to hide his face wasn't so much of a surprise compared to the rest of the things they had been through. Knowing he was from the demonic faction, it made sense, but it started to make Simeon think. Wait, but why the mask? Is he someone that people might recognize? I guess with his strength, that would make sense, and with us going back to the demonic faction. Just how did Raze meet these people, and how is he able to do all of these things? Raze and Dame walked side by side, taking the lead. Dame was looking forward to meeting his friends. He had left them all without saying a word, and he hadn't exactly been in contact with them either. One he wasn't looking forward to was his father and how he would react to his disappearance. But for Reyes, he had another goal. Let's start the business of the Dark Magus while we are here. We'll spread the name out and see if anyone takes the bait. Chapter 182 Outsiders The group had entered the city of Repton and were walking through one of the many streets that were filled with hanging red lanterns and glowing lights. The sound of laughter and chatter filled the air. However, there was a certain group of people that stood out among all of those there. The usual three were huddled close together, Safa, Simeon, and Liam, while Reyes and Dame were walking in front of them not too far ahead. Look at them, Liam whispered. We're surrounded by those from the demonic faction, those that absorb the energy from others. I hear that they even eat humans. Well, no one would want to eat you anyway, so you're safe, Simeon replied back, but he was whispering as well. It was clear that he was a little scared of the people around them as well. Can you guys relax a bit? You're making us stand out, Dame replied. The people here are just like those from any other faction. There are those that don't belong to any clan, yet the Pagna warriors live side by side with them just fine. I'm sure you will see that we are not as bloodthirsty as people say. The thing was, out of all those present, the one that was actually catching the most attention was Dame himself. As soon as other warriors saw him, they started to whisper. He had gained quite the reputation after taking down Beatrix in the last fight. Judging from their words and what they could hear, no one knew that he had been missing. As for the words they were saying, they were quite uplifting. It's Dame from the Neverfall clan. Everyone is saying that he's changed ever since the battle with Beatrix. Ah, yes, I heard that too. He no longer visits the brothels. Is that why we haven't seen him in the city for a while now? Perhaps he has been secretly training so he can be called on his next assignment. Wait, do you think that's why he's returned? 
Perhaps it's due to the recent troubles. Hearing the last line had caused Dame to react slightly. Rays could see the gesture in his hands. Eventually, the group had entered an inn, and thankfully, it wasn't one where Rays had caused trouble last time. With his hooded figure, he shouldn't attract any attention anyway. After paying for the room for them, the group sat down at a nearby table. Dame didn't order any drinks for himself, but had ordered for the others. I won't be staying long with the rest of you, Dame explained. As you said, we need to get to work, and the academy is only closed for a short amount of time. I will be meeting with Fixteen, as he will be the one spearheading our collaboration and sorting things out with our buyers while we are away. I want to set up a more permanent point of contact with him, Dame explained. I assume that you will be buying products and looking for items? Ray's nodded. T planned to make a few items for myself, but also wish to create a few new products that maybe some others will be happy with. Ray's answered. With the level 2 power stones, he could create items with an even greater healing effect and buff. He also had the ice attribute, now that he could use to create a new special type of pill. As well, if you're looking for items like you did last time, then the better ones will be at the auction house. You can also sell a couple of the level 2 power stones there and buy items in bulk. At the moment, we have no base to store items and produce something that we will need to solve eventually. Let's just make a batch of products and see how much profit we can make. After that, we can focus on setting up more of a permanent base. If you head to the auction house, ask for Amon named Andy. He has a few scars on top of his head, so he will be pretty easy to spot. Ray's nodded and didn't say much. He could tell by Dame's fidgeting demeanor even when talking that Dame was in a rush to get out of there, so he left, but he had a few words to say to the rest of the group. Have a good time, enjoy whatever you wish in this place, just try not to get into trouble, at least don't cause such a big mess. My name can only help you guys out so much, and I'm not sure how useful my name is right now. With that, Dame had left all four of them on their own in one of the largest cities that belonged to the demonic faction. So what are we going to do? Just stay at the inn during these five days, lay low, and then head back to the academy, Simeon asked. That sounds kind of boring, Liam replied. Didn't you hear what he said? Everyone here is normal, and no one even knows that we're from the Dark Faction, so we can just take this as a little trip to a city. I've never even been to a city this big. Ray's soon stood up from his seat. Even though it was nighttime, he had been to Repton before, and it was truly a city that never slept, so he was sure that he could still get to work straight away. Are you heading to the auction house right now? Simeon asked. Ray's nodded. It's best if I go alone. I'll be buying and selling quite a few things. There might be those that catch on to who I am, and if they see you who aren't disguised around with me, then they could target you as well. I brought you here just so that you would be safe, but you do not need to get involved with my doings. With those words said, Ray's was now the second one to leave the others on their own, and they saw him head out the door without even looking back. Man, Liam said out loud, I thought that I was the only one he treated like crap, but it looks like he doesn't think much of you guys either. He just left you like that. I thought you were his close friends and sister, but he still wants to act all solo like that. We know, Simeon said. I guess we just have to become more useful to him. In the end, the students' curiosity got the better of them, and they decided to walk around and explore the city. The more they saw, the more at ease they were. No longer were they heading around so stiffly. As they walked through, their bellies were growling with hunger, and they soon realized that there was a large problem. Hey, do you have any money at all? Liam asked. Both Safa and Simeon shook their heads. They were in a city with so many things to do and try, but none of them had any money at all. Everyone gather around, gather around a voice shouted at the crossing point of the many streets. The crossings were more open compared to the other areas, as people had to walk through and past. In the center, sometimes there were stalls set up to catch people's eyes, or even demonstrations. They had seen a few performances of singing, as well as plays, and this time there seemed to be another show going on. The three of them had been stopping by, 
watching the shows here and there, so they went ahead to watch the next one. At least it would distract them from the hunger they were feeling. We are the special students from the demonic faction's Pagna Academy, and today we have a challenge for you all. There were a group of five male students in total, all of them dressed in dark red clothing with the same shade of it, a slightly darker red. They looked around the same age as Simeon and the others as well. Right here with us today, we have our hope, our star student Mantis, also known as the Black Tiger, the one who is said to be even stronger than the White Dragon of the Dark Faction. White Dragon of the Dark Faction? Liam replied. Who has a nickname like that? The students were unaware of the name that had been spreading through the lands after the event and were unaware of what they were about to get involved in as well. Chapter 183 Have you heard of him? It wasn't hard for Dame to meet up with Fixteen now that he had appeared in Repton, or, more precisely, it wasn't hard for Fixteen to find him. Dame knew the news of his return would quickly spread. He could feel the intense looks in everyone's eyes. However, they weren't the same as before, the ones that looked at him as a useless fool. Either way, it didn't matter. He didn't care about his reputation, good or bad. He just knew that his return would be informed, and with it, he headed to a common place where he and his friends would meet up regularly. It was the three-tiered restaurant where Dame would do all of his meetings with his guests. The place wasn't too busy tonight, since it was quite late. The only ones that were still inside had won too many drinks. There were some that were a bit more clued in, mercenaries, bandits, other clan members just enjoying their time in the corner here and there. And then there was Dame, who patiently sat on his own at a square table where there were four benches, one on each side. He had made his order, and it didn't take long for him to see Fixteen, Carlson, and Kirk walking through the door. They looked the same as ever, and scanning the room, Kirk was the first to notice Dame. He's right over there. He's right there, just like you said he would be. Kirk pointed and went to run ahead with a smile on his face, but Carlson had quickly pulled him back. Hey, don't you remember what we said? Carlson whispered. That we were going to ghost him for a bit, just like he did us. I mean, who just ups and leaves like that and doesn't tell us anything? Fixteen hadn't told the other two what had really happened, but since he was in the room, he had seen it himself. He had seen Dame rush through the portal before it had even closed. Honestly, he wasn't sure how long he would be gone for in that other world of his, but he felt like Dame needed some punishment for making them worry. The three of them walked over, and when they did, they all sat down on the same bench, one opposite to Dame. None of them looked him in the eye as they turned their heads away. I know you guys are upset with me, but either way, I'm happy to see you all, and happy to see that all of you are fine. I don't know what I would have done if you were punished because of me, or sent off to fight in some crappy battle somewhere, Dame said. You're an idiot, Fixteen replied. You can go off, but you should at least do so with a plan first. Otherwise, we might not be so lucky next time. Dame smiled and ordered a few drinks for everyone. As they started to settle in, Dame did all the talking, asking them questions here and there about their general lives and talking about the past. There was no mention of where he was or what he had been doing. His friends weren't like that, they weren't nosy, and knew he would speak up if he felt the need. In the end, it was Dame that asked the first question. How is my father? Dame asked. At this point, both Kirk and Carlson were already too drunk to do anything. Fixteen, who didn't drink alcohol, was level-headed, and he somewhat knew these questions were going to come up. There are bigger issues at hand than you for him, so you are in the clear, but it's safe to say that I don't think you will be first in line to become the head of the clan anytime soon, Fixteen smiled. I was never planning on becoming the head, Dame replied. I want to carve my own path, and I'll be honest with you. I have a feeling that with the Dark Magus, I might be able to do it. I think I might even be able to create something even bigger than the Neverfall clan. Due to how Dame acted with the clan, many might think that he had next to no ambition. But those that knew the real Dame, they knew it was different. He had no ambition to do anything regarding the Neverfall clan. I heard some rumors around, and you said my father was struggling. Do 
Do you know what that's with? Dame asked. It's the light faction, Fixteen answered. Your victo rye against them, I guess, didn't rub too well, so they have been aggressive on the border. Honestly, your father was looking for you so you could earn more credit with the demonic faction, but since you weren't here, you can guess what he had to do. Fixteen didn't need to say anything. It meant the task had gone to one of his other siblings, one of his brothers, or even his sister. Speaking of the Dark Magus, Alba has stayed in Repton for quite a while. Rock Fixteen started to change the subject. It seems like she hasn't been able to get any leads on the Dark Magus, so she's returned to the one place where she knows she can get one. She has been on my back quite a bit, and not just on who this Dark Magus person is, but on getting some more product as well. Dame started to rub his hands as he heard this, and looking down, he was hiding the smile on his face. Tell her to come and meet me in a couple of days. I'm sure she will be surprised, and make sure she brings quite a bit of coin with her. If not coin, then at least high-value items. I'm sure she won't be disappointed. Hearing this, Fixteen's eyes started to widen. Does that mean you returned with the Dark Magus? But then, you couldn't have come through the portal. How did you make it here? What happened to the portal? Dame asked. That was one of the disputes, so Beatrix went in and defeated the Dimension Boss inside. The portal no longer exists. So does the Dark Magus have some way to get here as well. When Fixteen heard himself saying those words out loud, he realized how frightening they were. An individual that could mass travel individuals to different areas. It was something that every faction would fight for, as it could change the tide of wars. He is here, but keep it a secret, of course. The group continued to catch up and enjoy their time together, and as they continued to talk, Fixteen wanted to bring up one more rumor that he had heard. Ah, have you heard of this talk of this new rising star from the Dark Faction? Fixteen asked. Rising star? Dame replied, raising his eyebrow. Fixteen had no idea he was currently in the Dark Faction, but since he was limited to the Academy, he didn't hear much news or information. Yes, apparently, he's still a student at the Pagna Academy. They say he's a superstar, the next big thing to come from the Dark Faction. Of course, these things are often exaggerated, but they are calling him the White Dragon. Have you heard of him? Chapter 184 The Black Tiger Mantis The Black Tiger was a student who attended the Demonic Faction Pagna Academy. In total, there were three of these academies, one for each faction. Just like the Dark Faction Academy, they too were on a break and were paying a visit to their respective clans. As for Mantis, the other students weren't lying about who he was. He was the top student at the academy and he stood out like a sore thumb, particularly with his style. He had crazy black hair parted to his right side. What was shocking was how he would wear his robes. He tended to have only one arm and one sleeve, while the other half was tied around his waist, showing half of his upper body. On his chest, there was a large scratch, and strangely rather than red like a regular scar, it was black in color. This was how Mantis had gotten the nickname the Black Tiger. Today, in order to demonstrate his skills, we wish to issue a challenge to you all. The student at the front was doing all the talking. He wore a pair of spectacles which were rare to see, especially on a Pagna warrior, which made them think it was more of a fashion statement. His name was Rod. While Mantis was sitting on a chair, the other students had cloths covering several different items around them, waiting to reveal what they were to the crowd. We are here to prove to you that Mantis is truly one of the best students and a star in the making. Rod shouted. The crowd was already drawn in. It seemed like he was quite the speaker, as high articulation and tone were perfect. The crowd was already getting bigger by the moment. Right here, we have a series of challenges that you can take part in against Mantis. Rod continued to explain, and the cloth was taken off some of the items behind them. The first one is a measuring pillar. Test your strength against the star and set if you can best his power. Rod then pointed to Mantis himself. The second challenge, try to hit Mantis in any way possible. He won't strike back but only avoid your hits. Thirdly, see if your reaction time is even quicker than Mantis. The third item was a strange contraption. It was a large wooden block that looked almost like a pillar, but on top of the pillar, there were three buttons. 
the light would turn red, and one would have to hit them as quickly as possible. There were two of these large wooden blocks side by side with each other. The color would appear a total of 25 times, and one was to see who was able to hit the 25 blocks before the other, as another button would light or red only after one had been hit. Lastly, if you don't feel confident in any of these, then feel free to suggest any way you think you can prove your might against Mantis. If you do manage to beat him, the prize is one silver, as for giving it a go, it will cost a total of just ten coppers. The proposition seemed entertaining for most there. They had a chance to multiply their income tenfold. And if they didn't, at least they got to try something. Even more so, they would get the accolade of saying they had beaten the Black Tiger. The clever design by Rod also allowed people to take part who weren't Pagna warriors by providing a wide range of challenges. Because of this, many had immediately put their hands up. The first person that was selected was a female. She looked like a worker from one of the restaurants, and as for the game she had selected, it was none other than the strange box game. Excellent choice, Rod exclaimed. Standing up from his seat, Mantis went over and stood by one of the boxes, and so did the woman. They waited, and when both were ready, the match had begun. Both of them started to hit the buttons one after the other. The woman seemed to be doing well, and she could hear the sound of her opponent next to her. She had just gone past the twenty mark, at twenty-three she thought she was nearly there, and that's when the buttons had stopped, and a loud buzz noise resounded. Ah, so close, Rod said. Mantis looked over to the woman. You did well. Maybe if you tried again, you might beat me, Mantis claimed. The woman went back, and after her loss, there were still plenty who wanted take part. Ha ha, this is excellent, these fools, Rod thought. Do they really think she was close? Mantis had slowed down on purpose to give you the chance of feeling like you could win. Come on, more of you, more of you come up and play. The games continued, one after the other. A few had been selecting the box game, but after so many losses, they were beginning to lose hope. That's when a Pagna warrior had stepped up, but rather than selecting the box game, he had chosen another. I challenge you to the measuring pillar. The man was large and bulky in size, around three times the size of the students. As he made his way to the measuring pillar, Rod and Mantis glanced at each other and gave a slight nod. It was the man's turn first. He shrugged his shoulders and relaxed his hand, and then when he was ready, he swung his fist out wide, which looked more like a slap. It crashed into the pillar and shook the ground slightly before it absorbed the energy inwards. The number that was left marked on the pillar displayed 62. A smile on his face, the Pagna warrior was proud as he flexed his muscles. Two people in particular had been watching this whole thing from the crowd. This tall woman stood out at the front. She had dark skin pigmentation and slightly red glowing eyes. She wasn't alone. There was a man standing by her side. He had blonde hair that was swept and tied back, while wearing a mask that covered the upper half of his face. These two who stood here were members of the Crimson Crane. This whole thing is quite a sweet trick for them to earn a bit of money, Alba commented. I know what you mean. No respected Pagna warrior will go up against mere students to best them, especially to just earn a single silver coin, Kronker replied. You are correct, but if they're smart, that person will lose, Alba replied. Getting ready, Mantis also rolled his shoulder slightly, then dashed in, throwing his hand out, crashing it into the pillar. The energy was absorbing in, and finally, the number 45 was marked in. I win, the large man said, claiming his one silver coin from the others. Ah, well, you can't win them all, Rod stated. It's to be expected in such a strong city that there will be those who can best our student. Is there anyone else who wishes to continue to take part? Cronker was a little confused by what he had just seen. How did you know he was going to lose? And why did he lose on purpose? Kronker asked. It's simple, so more people will keep playing, Alba answered. Just as you said, they don't have to worry about anyone with half-decent skill taking part. Because it would just be petty of us. However, what would happen if the student were to best every single one of them at all of the games that they displayed? They would be disheartened. Exactly, Alba said with a smile. In the first place, in nearly all of the games, 
that kid has carefully been winning just by a small margin, and he had bested thirty people, earning them three silver coins. It was a good time for him to lose, and give hope to more of the participants, and they still make two coins worth of profit. With this loss, they're sure to lure more people in. Liam was rummaging around in his pants, and eventually he had pulled out a small bag, and emptying it, there were a few copper coins inside. He got forty-five. One can get more than forty-five. I can beat him and win the silver coin. Liam said with excitement. Wait, you had money this whole time. I thought you said you didn't bring anything? Simeon asked. I'm not made of money, Liam replied. Look, I only have twenty copper coins in total. At best, this would be enough just to feed me. Did you think I would just be a jerk and eat food in front of the lady when I can't even buy it for her? Of course not. So with this, I'm going to win this event, and I'm going to buy all of us food. Actually, you can beg me to buy you some F. Ood, since this is my money at the end of the day. Simeon gritted his teeth. He wanted to yell at him but felt like it would do nothing in this situation, and besides, with a score of 45, even Simeon was quite confident that he could win. I want to take part next, Liam shouted and pushed himself forward, then placed the coins into the collecting pot. I challenge you to the measuring pillar. This time Mantis and Rod looked at each other again, and there was a large smile on their faces. See, Alba said, what did I tell you? Another sucker was drawn into their trick. At the same time, Rays had just reached the outside of the auction house. I hope those guys aren't getting into trouble, he thought. Chapter 185, The Auction House The auction house was on the outskirts of the city. Luckily, as if Dame knew what Rays was planning to do, the inn that they were currently staying at was also not located in the center, but a little on the outskirts as well. However, the shape and design of the city oddly started to change the closer Rays got to the auction house. The lack of large giant buildings had lessened, and there was a one-mile-long road that went to the very end of the single large building. The auction house was made up of two tiers, with its slanted rooftops that curved upward and with colors in red. It had the same type of architecture as anywhere else in the city, but looked to be made of slightly more expensive materials. Even the large pillars looked as if they were made of a type of marble or red-colored jade rather than concrete. What was interesting, though, was that on the long mile strip on each of the sides, there were countless numbers of merchants that had set up stalls. Listening in, Rays had figured out that they were doing business deals with one another. Some of them had products on hand, samples, and others had a large stack of products one could buy there and then. The people that would head to the auction house weren't just those that lived in the city, but came from out of the city as well. Which was why the merchants took this opportunity to try and get as much business as possible. I was going to buy some of the basic materials in the marketplace, but I might actually get a better deal here. Ray's thought to himself. I plan to make a large amount of key pills in the future. So I should be treated like one of these merchants or government officials as well. There was a problem, though, and that was funds. Although Dame said he would handle most of the funds, at the moment he wasn't here. Ray's liked to solve issues himself as well, having control of the situation, so he thought to himself, that he would just pay for things himself somehow, and then charge Dame for it later. T will just have to send him an invoice, if they have those things in this world. There were two reasons now for attending the auction house. One to sell a couple of power stones, and the second to buy a few items that would be good for enhancing. Passing all of the merchants, Ray's was now at the front of the auction, and he could see that they were busy setting up. The workers weren't dressed like the Pagna warriors. They wore thick coatings of materials to cover themselves from the heat. They stood out from the regular folk due to their extravagant clothing. What Rays also noticed, though, were the guards. They were Pagna warriors and could be seen by a band that would be wrapped around the muscular sleeveless arm. There were workers set up that were evaluating items and buying them for the auction place, and the guards would then be seen escorting the items into the house itself. I wonder if the auction house is owned by a clan, or if it's government-owned and they just hire the clan for protection work. 
thinking of this, Ray's also felt like it would be best for him to not try and upset anyone, just in case there was a clan behind it. If he remembered correctly, the Neverfall clan that Dame was from, although strong, was not from or in charge of Repton. When looking at the evaluators, there were quite a few people lined up, waiting to show their items. Ray's was looking through the crowd. If I remember correctly, Dame told me to look for the bald-headed man with scars on top of his head. Found him, Ray's said, as he joined up and waited patiently in the line. It moved along and had done so fairly quickly, and finally it was his time to approach the man. Ray's walked up to the desk where he would show what items he had. Immediately, the bald-headed man was peeking, trying to get a look at Ray's face, trying to see underneath his hood. T don't think I've ever seen you before next, the man shouted immediately. Wait, Ray said, I'm here because I wish to sell a few power stones and s eek entry into the auction. You think that we would accept items from someone who hides his face? The man replied. Besides, not just anyone can enter the auction house. For people like you, if you wish to sell items of low value, then just head to the marketplace. Ray's was getting a little frustrated with the situation already, but he knew the man had a point, so he took a deep breath, and then pulled out the level 2 power stone from his side, making it look like he had gotten it from the pocket of sorts. I wish to sell 10 level 2 power stones and gain entry into the auction. Dame was the one that sent me here, Ray's stated. The bald-headed man's eyes were glued onto the power stone. A level 2 power stone certainly wasn't something that was rare. They saw things like this quite a bit, but they were popular items to buy, and 10 wasn't exactly a small number either. What interested him the most, though, was the name that had been used. Nice try. Do you know how many people come here a day claiming they know Dame Narfus? The man turned away, his arms folded, but his eyes couldn't stop staring at the power stone, and he couldn't help but wonder if this hooded figure really had ten. Just in case, he thought he would try something. Look, I'm in a good mood today. Entry into the auction house can let you in for the cost of five power stones, as for the other five level two power stones, we can give you the best flat rate of five silver for the remaining five. Five silver. Ray's screamed in his head. Am I getting scammed right now? Before Alter had bought the level 1 power stone for 10 silver, so a level 2 power stone should be a lot more valuable. Before even agreeing to speak to the man further, Ray's thought he could at least try and get a better price for the merchants from the side, and then just come in for the auction to buy some items. I'm sorry, but I think I will hold on to the crystals and will be back to enter the auction at a later time. Ray's politely said. At that moment, there was blood rushing to the man's head. This brat, I was just about to get a gold mine off him and sell those crystals myself. If he knew how much they were worth, then why did he play me like that? You think I'm going to let you in after wasting my time? I don't do this for free, you know. I get at least one level two power stone for my services. You can't just walk away, the man shouted. Ray's had turned around ignoring the situation. He would just have to try another time, or truly come back with Dame when the time was right. Turning his back, he was ready to walk. Are you freaking ignoring me? The man shouted again and grabbed Ray's wrist right where he was holding the level two power stone. Immediately, Ray's turned his head, looking right at the man. Don't touch me, Ray said, grinding his teeth. Chapter 186, Stepping Up. The touch on his wrist... Ray's could see it. He could feel the claws on his hands rubbing against his skin. It was being held onto tightly, as if someone was trying to pull him, to not let him go, and to go against his wishes, to go against what Ray's wanted to do. To don't want to do it. One don't want to do it. Ray's repeated in his head several times. Let go of me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. These words were being repeated in Ray's head over and over. However, he subconsciously still knew in his mind that he wasn't to act here in front of all of these people. There were even those that were behind him. There were too many witnesses to the whole thing. Still, his mind was switching between his conscious thought and the sensation of his skin being touched by another again. When looking at his face as well, the man's face, it was smiling. All of this mix of emotions and thoughts had caused something to react in Ray's, 
It was a subconscious feeling, and although he didn't know what was happening, the man on the other end certainly could feel it. Ab, what is this? What are you doing? The man's facial expression had changed. He could see the veins on his arms bulging. To him, it felt almost as if all of his blood that was in his body was rushing to his fingertips right where he was touching the other person. What are you doing to me? The man shouted and tried to pull away, but as he did, Ray's quickly grabbed onto his hand. You still need to pay, Ray said, his head down, his voice a little quiet. The meaning of the word pay, it was hard to tell what was meant by that. You touched me, so pay. The strange flow of power was still coming out of the bald-headed man, and he wasn't sure if he was imagining it or not, but it almost felt like his muscles were shrinking. He tried pulling away one more time. It wasn't working until a hand came swinging down between the two. It touched both of them, and as it did, like a force, it pushed their hands away without damaging either of them. It was a force of chi, and with it, Ray's had somewhat snapped out of what he was doing. He looked at his own hand for a few seconds before turning to the situation in front of him. The man who had interrupted their fight, he had long hair and quite a small frame. Not only that, but there were streaks of the color green in it. What stood out most was perhaps his pale complexion, with pigments of darkened black. For one, his fingertips were completely black, and so were a few darkened areas of skin under his eyes. It was quite the strange look for a human, but his clothing was like that of a Pagna warrior, colored in dark green. Come on, Clave, you know what you were trying to do. All of us regulars here know what you were trying to do. You kinda deserved what you got, so let's just leave this one, okay? The man asked. It was clear that the bald-headed auctioneer wanted to say more, but he was still far more concerned with what had happened to his body. As for you, strange hooded man, sorry for getting involved, that was rude of me, the man stated with a smile. If you wish to head into the auction house, you can always come with me since it was my mistake. Ray's looked at the man, and he couldn't sense any hint of dishonesty from him. He also had a bright smile despite the bags under his eyes. It just felt weird to raise. Could it be possible that there was a man who was willing to do that just from interrupting their little scuffle? In Ray's head, he was screaming that this was a scam. Behind the smile, Ray's was somewhat right. The man was thinking something because he had noticed what Ray's had done. What he used, it was the extraction technique of the demonic faction, and he had used it at an incredible rate. If he had held on to that man for a minute or so, would he have been dead? This person is clearly quite skilled. Just who is he? The man thought. The bald-headed man continued to walk away, feeling a little weak in his footsteps. What happened to me? I still duh, don't understand. At least Reno came and saved me in time. I guess I should thank the Crimson Crane at some point. Meanwhile, in the city, Liam had been loosening up his shoulders, ready for his chance at winning an entire silver coin. He had paid his fee and was swinging his arm like a windmill. The other students couldn't help but laugh as they saw him. All right, let's do this. Liam had loosened his hand and was swinging it low slightly. He was letting it sway like an elephant's trunk. The others had seen this before because it was the skill he had used at the event. Dashing forward, he placed the chi in his fist, swung it around, and straightened it out, crashing right into the middle. The power was strongly concentrated, and the number was starting to rise. Oh, that kid, he's a lot better than I thought. Maybe things will start to get interesting, Alba smiled. The number had finally stopped, and on the pillar, the number 92 had appeared. Whoa, look at that, look who's paying for your dinner! Liam jumped in joy, as if he had already won. There was murmuring among the crowd because they too thought he had already won. His score was even better than the other Pagna warrior gentlemen who had tried before, and he had already lost, so the result seemed plain as day. However, there was a concerned look on Rod's and Manta's faces now. Crap, I never expected a kid our age to get such a high score. Otherwise, I would have picked a few others. If Mantis loses this one now, then we will lose another entire silver coin, leaving us only one silver coin profit between us. In the first place, the students were doing this as a way to make money, so it was clear that Mantis couldn't lose this. You look the same age as me, 
but I don't recognize you from the academy? Mantis said as he walked past and positioned himself in front of the pillar. Ah, yeah, I just look older. I'm going to the academy next year, Liam lied. I see, so I'm your senior then. Well, I guess as a senior, I should show you something then, Mantis claimed. Before, the man had just placed Chi in his fist, so I decided to do the same when competing against him. I want to be fair, you see. I saw you use some type of technique, so then, I shall do the same. Mantis started to crouch down slightly, lowering his back, his chest getting closer to the floor. Then he put both of his hands to the side. The chi activated in him, and in an instant, his feet shifted across the ground. Visual chi was activated, showing a line of black aura in his tracks. Twisting his fist, Mantis slammed it right into the center of the pillar. The force expanded outward, wide with a few sparks before it started to condense in. Finally, the number had appeared on the pillar, showing 150. Whoa, I guess he really is the star student at the Pagna Academy. The crowd started to say in amazement. They also felt like there was a clear explanation he had given in order to make the contest fair, so the people weren't so put off about still trying, and even more so, some wanted to just brag if they managed to beat him. That kid is really strong, Cronker said. Those basic measuring pillars only go up to 150, so there's a chance that his attack is even stronger than before. I guess he is skillful enough to win and choose when to lose his battles. Alba was nodding her head up and down and could see Liam falling down on his knees. She didn't know why, but she was kind of rooting for the eye patch kid. If we invited someone like him into the Crimson Crane, I'm sure he would be valuable to us in the future, Cronker added. You're right, maybe he would be valuable to us, but that's in the future, and right now, we need to grow. Otherwise, the clans will soon surpass us. Day by day, there are also more dangerous portals opening up. Our group is getting asked to close a few of them just because of how dangerous they are, and the last thing I would want is to lose one of you guys. He can try joining when he's ready, but I'm looking for something else. Albasa, I'd. In defeat, Liam had to drag his feet walking back to the others. Usually, Simeon would have said something, but he couldn't due to how saddened Liam even looked. I'm sorry guys, I really thought that I could win. I guess I just looked like an idiot. Liam pulled his hair, trying to cover up his one eye, but they both could see a tear falling down it. When he tried to move further forward, Safa blocked his path and she held out her hand. Liam looked at it for a second, confused, then she shoved her hand again. Eventually, she almost reached down into his pants since it seemed like he wasn't getting the message. All right, I understand. You want the money, right? Liam said as he pulled out his last ten copper coins and handed them over. Safa then walked straight past Liam and onto the field. Wait, Safa, you aren't, you are. Simeon shouted as he saw her standing in front of Mantis. Chapter 187, A New Challenge With everything that had happened at the auction so far, and with him yet to have even stepped foot in the room itself, Rays felt that it might be best for him to leave. After Dame was done with his meeting, he would just have to come with him, so there would be no more problems. Or if Dame was busy, he could at least try again the next day. Today, his mood had been soured, and he knew he was more likely to be angered if he did go to the auction. So turning around, he was ready to head out of the place. Hey, wait! Reno shouted, the man who had interrupted his little scuffle. Weren't you going to head inside the auction or buy something? Rays ignored the man shouting and continued on. If you decide to come to the auction, then be here at midday tomorrow. I'll be here, and my offer will still stand. You'll be able to get inside with me, Reno shouted. When he saw the hooded man continue downward, he couldn't help but smile at himself. Another tragedy averted. Alba should be giving me medals for this stuff, if only she wouldn't stop obsessing over the Dark Magus, Reno said to himself. I guess it would make sense for an alchemist to arrive at the auction to buy some ingredients, but I'm tired, Alba. We haven't found him now. What makes you think we'll find him later? While continuing to walk, Rays couldn't help but look at his own hand. He was thinking back to what had happened before. In my haste of anger, did I activate the extraction technique? Rays already knew the answer. He could feel it inside. The chi had grown compared to what it was before. 
It didn't feel like some temporary energy either. It was a condensed form of when he would use the cycle of life and death. This is the demonic faction's technique, the one Dame told me not to use on other people. Ray's thought. The feeling is quite addictive. I remember that he also stated that a person could go mad and start to hallucinate just from using the cultivating technique. I wonder if it's the same for this as well? Trying to forget about it, Ray's thought it was best he head back to the others for now, wherever they were. The crowd was surprised to see, of all the people there, a small young girl step up. Not only that, but she had walked over to Mantis, who was now sitting back down in his seat. Crap, she's already out there. What am I meant to do? I can't just walk out. I mean, I guess it won't be so bad. It's not like she's going to get hurt, right? And we're not causing any trouble, Simeon reasoned with himself. They were just doing what the whole event was set up for. After looking at Mantis, Safa then went and placed the ten copper coins into the metal pot, making a small clang noise. She had done this before anyone else could decide to take part, and then she walked up to Mantis, who was in the chair himself. Oh, is she taking the hitting challenge? One of those in the crowd called out. They were quite surprised at this, because it was the least picked event so far from the contestants. Only a couple of Pagna warriors had decided to try, and both of them had lost. Although it did look like they had come close to hitting Mantis, it had already become clear to the public that regular people would be unable to best him. Still, there were a lot of Pagna warriors in the crowd. All right, are you sure, young lady? Rod asked. You have a total of two minutes, and if you are able to touch him, then you win. Safa nodded her head as she got into position and assumed a fighting stance. Why is she doing this? Liam asked. Is she really that hungry? Simeon kicked Liam on the shin after hearing him say that. Do you really think she would be like that? It's because of you, you idiot. Me? Liam pointed at himself. I think I can understand because when we saw you return, we understood how you felt. With us finally becoming second stage Pagna warriors, we felt like we had achieved something. And yet here we are, failing again. It almost feels like we're destined to fail. But then the speech Ra, Z made that day, it still plays in my head. We can change that, right? We have to at least try, and I think that's what Safa's doing now. There was already one talented young student out of the group, but for a second one to appear, what were the chances? And Mantis was, of course, confident in his skills. Stepping up, he was in a relaxed stance, but he was relatively close as well. Begin, Rod shouted. Safa walked forward slowly, still in her fighting stance. She didn't rush or charge in and continued to almost shuffle forward on the ground. Right when she was in distance, she did the two-step shift and threw out a fist. Immediately leaning to the side, Mantis had avoided the strike. Crap, she's fast, Mantis thought, and he didn't have much time to think after, as he needed to avoid the next hits that were coming right after. He took a step back and then kicked off to the side, avoiding them. But Safa didn't give up. She was chasing him down, following him every step of the way, and thrusting her fists like they were a spear, trying to jab them at Mantis. Still, despite the fast movements, Mantis was avoiding the hits each time, using his speed and staying on his toes. Wow, this is amazing. It's like we're watching some type of show. Yeah, look how fast they both are. Still, that girl can't touch him. I guess it's impossible. Maybe these guys were just playing us this entire time. Rod stood on the edge, could hear the crowd speaking, and this is what he feared. What were they meant to do? With Mantis showing his true skills less and less, people were willing to participate. However, they couldn't lose this early either. This was something that was out of his calculations. A minute has passed, and the sweat is coming down the side of Safa's face, but she hasn't slowed down. For your age, and not tiring using so many foot movements, you must be a second-stage warrior. That's really impressive, Mantis claimed, but you'll never be able to hit me. Safa felt like she could see a way, as she thrust her fist forward, but every single time with the flow, Mantis would lean back, and then finally, Time! Rod called out. Safa was huffing and panting, and she felt like collapsing on the floor, but she didn't as she wiped her sweat away. Woo! Simeon shouted, clapping and so did Liam as well. You were amazing! Liam shouted. If there were ten seconds more, 
you would have got him. No, one second more. Of course, Liam didn't think this, but he wanted to say whatever he could to cheer her up in the current situation. After all, she tried because of him. Walking back, Safa was still tired, dragging her feet, but soon, the others in the crowd started to cheer her on as well, stating that she had done a great job. When the cheers started to die down, Rod was back to his speech again. All right, that was quite the show. Is there anyone else up for taking on the Black Tiger? The people in the crowd started to look at each other, but most of them were unsure now. What could they do after seeing that? They couldn't beat him at the measuring pillar. Not after that, so that left the reaction game. But even then, now it just felt like him nearly losing before was all so fake. Damn it, that was not how this was supposed to go, Rod thought to himself. What do we do? Mantis asked as he walked over and whispered. It's those two from before. Because of them. Everything's ruined. It looks like we might need to wrap it up, Rod replied. Thinking about how their event had to end so soon, the vein popping at the side of Rod's head, he thought he should give at least a goodbye present to those that caused the problem in the first place. Don't one of you two want to try again? Rod asked. Both of you were very close, and remember, Mantis has been using his strength, so he should be tiring out. If not one of you two, how about your friend? Both Safa and Liam looked at Simeon, and that's when it clicked in his head. Hey, wait a second. I think you could actually win at something. Huh, me? Simeon said. There's no way I could get a higher score at the measuring pillar, and Safa is faster than me. My reaction speed sucks as well. Not at any of those, Liam claimed. They said we could make our own events, and what are you better at than anything else? Taking hits. Without consulting Simeon any further, Liam walked forward. You said he's the strongest, right, the star of the demonic faction? Well, how about three hits? Our friend here will take three hits from the Black Tiger, and if he's still standing, we win. What? Simeon shouted. Why the fuck would you say three and not one? Simeon screamed in his head. Although he did think he was good at taking hits, and this could work, he didn't want to go through the pain. However, he could still see Safa covered in sweat, and the imagery of Liam crying from before. Did he not want to achieve something as well? Rod turned back to look at Mantis upon hearing this suggestion, and a large smile was on his face. What better way to finish off the day and get their frustration out of them? Very well, we accept, Rod said. There is a problem, though. Simeon replied, stepping forward. We don't have any money to take part. There was an awkward silence. Although Rod wanted to punish this group of kids, he did have his own principles. He couldn't just let them participate for free. That wouldn't have been fair to all the customers from before. It looked like they would have to end the event there after all. Till pay for him, a female voice said. As she stepped forward, she flicked a coin up. Immediately, Rod caught it and looked at it. His eyes bulged out of his head as he could see it was a silver coin. If that kid wins, add that to his reward, and if the Black Tiger wins, well, you can keep it. But I want to see what that kid can do. Alba said, Chapter 188, Three Strikes. For a second, Simeon thought he had found his way out of the current situation. He was of two minds. Of course, he wanted to win. It would be good to prove himself in front of all these people, and also to get some payback for what had happened to the others. It was a chance to prove to himself how much he had grown and whether his hard work had been worth it. However, all of that came at a cost, and that cost was getting hit by someone who was likely very strong. Man, I'm not too sure about this. That Black Tiger guy, he's seriously giving me some Richter vibes. Simeon thought he could even see a large smile on his face like he was about to enjoy what was about to happen next. Why? Why are strong people all strange weirdos or freaks? Well, at least this one doesn't seem like he's going after me. Simeon walked over, feeling like his fate was decided, and turned to look over at the mysterious person who had paid for him to take part. Who was she? What interest did she have in the whole thing? Or did she simply think she was doing him a favor because he wanted to take part? That question many people knew the answer to already. They immediately recognized who it was, as there weren't many that would have dark red pigmented skin, at least not one that would stand out as a beauty like her. That's Alba, right from the Crimson Crane. 
Yeah, I think you're right. I heard that she had been staying in the city for a while. Quite a few people have seen her here and there. It's not just her. I've seen other members from the Crimson Crane as well. I wonder if they have some deal going on with the demonic faction. Maybe, but you have to remember they are wanderers, so they can go wherever they want. I doubt that they will cause any trouble while they are here. The whispers and mumblings were caught by Safa and Simeon. They too had heard of the Crimson Crane. They were the biggest wandering clan. There was a debate on whether they were the strongest clan in existence because the other clans were so much larger in number compared to them. Then the wanderers would hardly get into scuffles with any of the clans from other factions to maintain their neutral position. Man, I can't believe our luck. Now we'll have two silver coins. We can go for a big feast after this, Liam said. Safa couldn't help but smile at the comment, because the way Liam was speaking, it made it sound as if Simeon had already won. He had great confidence in him, and she felt somewhat guilty for not believing as much in Simeon as Liam did. But it was all because she had gone against him for two solid minutes. This black tiger's strength was one that was either equal to Richtor's or even greater. In order to make it more of a show, Simeon stood where the chair once was that had been moved out of the way. He then faced the crowd, spread his feet out wide, bent his knees slightly, and placed both of his fists by his waist. All right, bring it, Simeon said. While Mantis was getting ready, Rod walked over and whispered in his ear. Remember, these guys ruined everything for us. We won't have enough now. We'll have to stop after this, so do whatever you want. Mantis nodded, and then he got into the same stance as he did before hitting the pillar. He crouched down, his hand wasn't like that of a fist but opened up like a claw, almost touching the floor. Here I go! Mantis shouted. He kicked off with his chi, but unlike before, there was no visible chi in his steps behind him. It was the same when throwing out his fist, there was no visible chi, but he still increased the power of his chi and slammed it right into the center of Simeon's stomach. A loud shockwave went off, blowing the hair of those that were standing near. Simeon's feet had shifted around a meter on the ground. This guy, he's the same age or younger than me. I can't use my full strength, otherwise he could die. There was an ache in his hand that Mantis noticed. It hurt, it didn't feel like he had hit flesh, but almost like punching a box, large solid rock. Now that he looked at the person in front of him, he also noticed that he should have fallen over or gone flying in the air, but instead, he was still standing in place. <laughs> Simeon roared out loud in the air, letting out all of the pain he could feel. His stomach muscles were throbbing, and with each throb, pain would be sent through his whole body. What a hit, Simeon thought. If I hadn't reached the uncommon metal body, I would have been taken out by that. Damn, this hurts more than anything Dame has ever done to me before. The crowd was impressed, and they started to cheer on Simeon, seeing this. What they thought was going to be a simple one and done, now looked like it was going to take a bit more than that. I thought as much, Alba said, her smile larger than before. All three of those kids that were together, they are very interesting, a lot more interesting than those from the Panya Academy. They feel fresh, yet somehow they have this special air about them. She was glad that her bet paid off. But the real question was, what was going to happen now? Semyon resumed his stance, walking back to where he was before, and placed his hands by his side again. Three hits, right? So I guess I got two more? Mantis said, his hand shaking. Maybe I went too easy on him. I'm the Black Tiger. I'm the hope of the demonic faction and the Academy. I can't let this nobody stand in my way, he thought, getting in the Tiger stance once more. To still don't want to kill him, but let's see you stand after this. Mantis didn't say anything else. And this time when he rushed forward the same way as before, the visual chi could be seen coming off his foot. A blaze of black energy across the ground. When throwing out his hand though, there was none, and he twisted his fist like before hitting Simeon in the stomach. His body skidded across the ground, and he had gone back around three meters, twice the amount he did last time. His face looked like it was boiling red as he held in his breath. His legs were shaking and finally, he opened his mouth. PFT! Out from it, specks of blood went out and onto the floor. 
The throbbing pain was even more intense than before, and through his clothes where the fingers had hit him, blood could be seen soaking through. So you made it through my second hit, huh? Mantis said as he got back in position, getting ready to strike again. He couldn't believe it. Even adults wouldn't be standing up. What was going on? Wasting no time, he was ready to go again, and when Simeon moved back to his spot, his legs were like shaking water. Rather than cheering on from the crowd, instead seeing this, there was concern for him. Hey, hey, he's not gonna go for a third hit, is he? Liam said. He can barely stand? Safa also didn't have a face that showed she was happy with what Simeon was deciding to do. As Simeon walked across the ground, he started to remember certain memories. I wanted to be a Pagna warrior, right? I was the one that decided this. Back then, when I got this strong body, I thanked Raze and decided to be loyal to him. But what have I done to help him? All I'm able to do so far is become a meat shield. Yet, here I am, getting taken out by another Pagna student. This isn't an adult or some dimensional boss. It's a student just like me, so I'll take this hit. Simeon wiped his mouth with his sleeve. As he was getting into position, he started to think of something. Earlier he remembered that they were talking about something. They had mentioned a certain name, and it made him think. Why would students be talking about being stronger than someone from the Dark Faction? There was a particular idea that floated in his head. Hey, this white dragon you talked about being stronger than? Simeon answered. It isn't someone who happens to be from the Dark Pagna Academy, right? Hearing this, Liam started to shake, as he had figured it out too. No, it can't be. Ha, so you have heard the rumors too, Rod shouted. We all know that. The Dark Faction is weaker than the Demonic Faction. They are far too tame in their methods. The rumors of the white dragon are exaggerated, and the Black Tiger will show it at the next martial arts gathering. Safa and both Liam knew exactly who they were talking about now. With the white hair and what he had done, it made sense for rumors to have spread around. You said you were stronger than the White Dragon? Smiling, Simeon revealed his bloody teeth. I'm sure whoever he is, he could kick your arse. Bring it on! Chapter 189, Still Standing when Simeon eventually made it back to the same spot as last time, his wobbling legs started to steady. He straightened them out and placed both of his hands by his side, determined to give it another go. The audience members were worried because of his condition and the blood that came out of his mouth. An internal wound was no laughing matter. Sure, Pagna warriors had stronger bodies. However, at the lower stage, they were still closer to being human than some type of martial arts god. If he was badly injured and didn't receive treatment, then there was a good chance it could mean death for the warrior. Wait, maybe he's going to use that, Liam said. The same thing that he used against one of the main disciples back then. What Liam was referring to was the bounce-back effect that his earring had, allowing him to reflect the damage that he would receive back to the attacker. It was perfect in this situation. Although he had no idea of hurting the opponent that they might disregard the contest, but it was better than him losing his life. Hearing this, Safa was looking into Simeon's eyes and she was shaking her head. She had noticed something. Every time Simeon did use the skill, he would touch his earring, but his hand was nowhere near the earring and she had a bad feeling about the whole situation. She was right as well. Simeon couldn't use the effect of the earring because it needed to store dark magic. Rays hadn't stored dark magic in the earring, so there was no such effect at the moment. Not only that, but Safa was paying attention to Mantis as well. I would lose? You think someone like me would lose to the white dragon from the dark faction? Mantis's hand was shaking, and that's when he switched. Rather than his left hand, he lifted his right hand into the air. The chi was starting to rise in his body and the marking on his chest, it started to turn a shade darker, almost turning completely black on his skin. Hey, that kid isn't messing around anymore, and the other one is nearly dead, Cronker said. Is everyone really going to watch and let this happen? Did you forget where we are? We're in the demonic faction. Firstly, there's the general rule of the regular public not getting involved in the Pagna Warriors business, and this is Pagna Warrior business, Alba explained. In the demonic faction, 
Deaths happen all the time due to scuffles, and it's down to the clans to solve what happens between them. They should all know the consequences of what they're doing. It's just the Pagna way. You might be right, Kronker said. But it was because of your money that you started this bet. Raising her hands, Alba started to push her eyebrows together, massaging them in circles. You're right, which is why I'm having a hard time deciding what to do. Both Liam and Safa were wondering what to do themselves, because they never thought that Simeon would be that stubborn. He didn't seem to even want to do such a thing in the first place, so why was he still up there? Simeon's mind felt like he was in a different place, as memories were resurfacing for him again. The time he was with his sister, running away from the beasts from the portal break. At the time, she had pushed him away, and the beast had got her instead. He remembered seeing her struggling, her dying face, and her telling him to run, but what if back then he was able to stand, to take the beast's hit head on? It won't run away. Simeon thought to himself, shifting his feet, but his eyelids droopy and more blood coming from his mouth. That was it. Seeing how Simeon's condition was, Safa couldn't take it anymore as she pushed through the crowd onto the stage. Safa, what are you doing? Liam called out, chasing after her. Rod was the first to notice the commotion as he could hear the footsteps from behind. Hey, what are you doing? This was your deal that you made. You were the one that said three hits and your friend hasn't given up yet, Rod shouted. Safa didn't care, though, as she continued to charge forward. Stop her, Rod called out. The students went to grab her, but at the right time, she had slipped past them. Liam was close behind her, wanting to help, but now the students that she had gone past had placed their attention on him instead. One went to throw out a punch that he managed to avoid, but the other hit him right across the face. He didn't fall, but before he knew it, they had grabbed his legs and pinned him to the ground. Just stay out of it, the student said. Lifting his head, Liam was taking a look at what was still going on. He could see that Mantis had finished getting ready and had gotten into his tiger stance once again. Not only that, but Safa was continuing forward. You are not getting in the way, Rod said. Safa did the two-step shift again at the right time, but tracking her Rod had followed and grabbed her by her clothing, he lifted her up in the air and slammed her onto the ground on her back. You guys may be skillful, but you're forgetting all of us are top students from the Demonic Pagna Academy. Mantis isn't the only one who's skilled, and you're not stopping this. Safa tried to scream because she could see it. Mantis had jumped off from his position, the visual chi leaving his feet, and now it was covering his right hand as well. As he threw it forward, claw marks, a trail of black were left from his hand, and it crashed right into Simeon's stomach. Mantis's fingertips had gone through his skin, into his muscle. They were being soaked with blood and the impact of the chi hit Simeon like a shockwave. Moments later, a large chunk of blood poured out from his mouth. Slowly, Mantis pulled his hand out and could see Simeon looking up at him. I, I did it, Simeon said. I didn't run away. Right after saying those words, his legs had given in, and Simeon fell straight to the floor. You bastards! Liam shouted as he wiggled his body, trying to get free from the floor. You killed him. You freaking killed him over some stupid game. And for what? One or two silvers? Is that all a life is worth to you? Safa had gotten up off the floor, and Rod no longer stopped her as she rushed to Simeon's side. Mantis, on the other hand, stood up standing above him. Did what? Mantis stated. All you did was prove that I am stronger than you. You shouldn't have said that I was weaker than the white dragon. The sound of low, soft sobs were heard from Safa. It sounded like a choking pain because Safa was unable to make full noise. Yet she was unable to contain her feelings as she shook Simeon's body violently. Everyone looking at the scene was stunned into silence, and they felt like they were unable to move. Although it might have been a scene that happened in the demonic faction every now and again, never had they seen so much emotion involved. In the middle of the silence, footsteps could soon be heard among the crying. Mantis, who was ready to pack it up and call it a day, looked up and could see someone emerge from the crowd, pushing past the others and standing there. What happened here? The hooded man asked with a small part of his white hair showing underneath. 
Chapter 190 The Cromwell Family Heading back from the auction, Ray's was attempting to calm down. He knew he was in a sour mood, and it was best not to act on his emotion. It was something that he had problems dealing with his whole life. Certain situations, scenarios that he would go through would remind him of his childhood, remind him of his past life. At times he didn't mind this, because it was what drove him to continue forward, but when it was unwanted, the emotions would get too strong for him to deal with, and this was the best situation. Heading back, Ray's was going to stay in the inn and call it a night, but he had been walking around aimlessly, not really knowing where he was heading for a while. He had just been staring forward, and that's when he could see that quite a large crowd had gathered just up ahead in the crossing of streets. Walking ahead, Ray's could then hear a mighty loud yell, a scream that sounded familiar and shook his core slightly. He continued to walk forward, not knowing what he would see. Would they be out here, but why would there be a crowd around them? Ray's thought, his pace quickening as he hurried. Once again, just like other times, images were flashing through his head, and instead of a past scene playing, it was one that he had imagined up. The image of those that he had recently gathered around him dead, Safa lying on the floor covered in blood, Liam, Dame, Simeon, all of them having been scorched by some type of magical power, and Ray's his own hands covered in blood. This is not real. Ray's thought to himself as he continued walking forward, stop imagining things with your stupid mind. It was a certain realization that was starting to dwell on him. It was the fact that he didn't want the same thing to happen again. Those that were close to him, Ray's didn't want them to go like that. Finally, he had reached the back of the crowd, and he slowly pushed his way through until he had reached the front. He walked forward slowly, his footsteps light as he stared at the entire scene in front of him. What happened here? Ray's asked. His eyes were glued to Safa, who was crying, and Simeon, who had blood coming out from his mouth and onto the floor. Slowly, Ray's was taking one step forward at a time getting closer and closer to the others. Does he know them? Alba said, seeing the way the person was moving, it was clear that he was in a state of shock. His eyes were glued to Simeon on the floor and the blood, the scene in front of him flashing back and forth to the image he had not too long ago. Hey! One of the students that were standing close to Liam took his foot off his chest while the other still had him pinned down. There was another that was eyeing up Ray's from the side as he walked closer as well. No one is to get involved. We won this match fair and square, and everyone is a witness he could have stopped at any time. Ray's head was still locked onto Simeon. He was kneeled over, his skin pale. It looked almost like he couldn't breathe, and Safa couldn't stop her tears. She hadn't even noticed that something else was going on. That was until Ray's spoke a few words. Do you know who you guys harmed? Ray's asked. Who? The student asked. We are all students from large clans in the demonic faction, and you think you're someone special. Someone who doesn't even dare show his face. If you were someone important, you would take down that stupid hood. Ray's took another step forward, and then for his next step, he raised his foot up higher than he had done before. These people are from the Cromwell family. They are from my family. Ray's slammed his foot on the ground, and out from it a strong chi exploded out. The first descending step was used, and it immediately made those that were close by uneasy. Such powerful chi, I could even feel it from here, Alba thought to herself, but it doesn't seem like a large amount. How can he emit such strength from just a step? Right after the first step, immediately Ray's performed the second desi, nending step. The added chi propelled him forward, and before the student could react, Ray's had already grabbed his face. With his chi, Ray's then threw his face down into the ground, but he didn't just use his chi. Push of the wind, Ray's whispered through his clenched teeth. The student's body and entire head struck the ground, breaking the floor beneath it, and his head bounced after hitting the floor. Immediately, the others came right at him, forgetting about Liam. As they went to strike, Ray's had performed the third step, jumping backward. Their attacks had completely missed, hitting nothing but the air. The fourth descending step activated, where Ray's kicked off from both of his feet. When reaching his opponent, he swung his arm to the side. Silent strike. 
His fingers were closed together, and using his wind powers, he caused a large cut right against the other student's chest. Blood splattered out, going over Reyes's clothes, but he didn't slow down. Doing onto the fifth step, he jumped to the side and immediately grabbed onto the other student's arm. Due to all of the steps being performed one after the other, the chi continued to build up. Reyes had also just drained the energy from the man before. His power was much more like that of a third-stage Pagna warrior right now, rather than that of a second-stage warrior. He lifted his hand up and with no hesitation swung it down, hitting right on the elbow. A loud crack was heard as the arm was broken in half. Reyes pulled the broken hand and then punched the man in the face, letting go and allowing his body to be lifted in the air and thrown to the floor. It was only then that for that moment had Reyes stopped his continuous attack because there was no longer anyone close to him. Rod was sweating buckets as he took a step back. Who is this guy? He just took out three of the top students at the academy like they were nothing. Are these three really from a respectable clan? But I've never even heard of the Cromwell family before, Rod thought. He knew in his mind after seeing what had happened that he had no chance of winning, even though he was slightly stronger than the others. Liam had gotten up off the floor and was looking at the trail of wounded that Reyes had left behind him. This guy? How can he keep getting stronger? Liam thought. All I know is right now I'm glad he's on our side. The crowd was stunned in silence as they saw what happened. It was a cruel display of power that usually they would only see if a Pagna warrior offended a clan head. It was unexpected after seeing the strength of the others being used as well. Not only that, but those in the crowd, some of them were five-stage and four-stage Pagna warriors, and they had noticed what the hooded person had used. That was the ten descending steps, and he was able to produce five of them in a row. Is this a higher-stage warrior? If that's the case, then isn't his punishment too cruel? Cronker and Alba were thinking along the same lines. If he's a stage five warrior, then aren't those kids doomed? Cronker asked. I thought higher warriors would see this as a kid's scuffle. A simple beating would do, but not like this. Wouldn't a clan be looked down upon just for bullying? I don't think he is a stage five warrior, Alba replied. From the first step, although it was ferocious, the amount of chi, it was close to a stage three warrior at best. But then, how could he perform the five steps? Aren't years and years needed to perfect the chi control? Cornker asked. Alba had a large smile on her face because that was exactly what was needed. The person in front of them could very well be a genius, a one of a kind, but the real question was, which one was the bigger genius? The mysterious hooded guest, or the black tiger? You've hurt my friends, Mantis said as he walked over, allowing Rod to move out of the way. He tensed his fist, gathering the energy in his hand again. I can't just let you go. Otherwise, what type of person would that make me? Saf A was now aware of what was happening, and Reyes looked at her for a moment. He could see her eyes were swollen. You hurt my family, Reyes said as he stretched out his hand. In it, he had a blue chi pill, as well as a green-colored one as well. He then lifted his head as he placed the two chi pills into his mouth. The effects of both of the pills had entered and energized his body. He was surging with power he didn't have before. His chi and mana had been restored on top of it. The green-colored pill, it was a buff pill that was made with the wind attribute 